So you've briefed your activity, you've led it, they've had a great time, you've circled them up and you're about to say something but you don't know what to say. What questions do you ask to debrief your group's experience? If this context sounds familiar to you, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share my five all-time go-to favorite debrief questions that have never ever failed me. I reckon I was probably in my first three months of my full-time position as an adventure programmer or experiential educator. And I'd been leading this multi-day program with a particular group and they're having a good time and they're being challenged from time to time. And then I was given the opportunity on my own without my supervisor to run a particular activity. And it was really clear they were challenged. It took 30 or 40 minutes to complete. And yet, even despite the challenges, they came up victorious at the end. And I was excited. It was clear to everybody that the group was excited as well. So I gathered them up because that's what, you know, experiential educators do. We're about to launch into the debrief. And I realized when I got there, I didn't know what to say. There was something <laughs> missing. A, I didn't quite know what was gonna happen in the experience, but I was missing maybe a few skills to be able to you know, craft those really well-rounded questions that land well for a group so that you can get some responses. Because here's what happened. I asked a question, uh, kind of fumbling my way through the beginning, making it look like I really knew what I was saying. And I said, so how do you feel? It was clear as day that they're all feeling pretty excited, but the first couple of responses was, okay, I didn't know where to go. Didn't know what to do next. And I actually don't remember what happened after that. I think I could have just blanked out and probably fell over. I don't think that happened, but you get the idea. If this sounds like you, then lean into this video because I'm gonna share with you my five best questions that I reckon I probably pedal all the time because they work so well and are so versatile. But there's a few things we wanna cover first. In particular, I wanna give you a framework for how these questions appear. If you've ever been starved of ideas of not knowing what to ask when you're standing before your group or leading some sort of reflection exercise, I'm gonna hand you a really simple, very popular, it seems to me that everyone should know this model, but it comes in three steps. Now, the basis of it comes from David Kolb's model of experiential learning called the experiential learning cycle. I'm gonna boil it right down to its absolute bare bones. And in the comments below, there are some links if you wanna deep dive more into the current content, because a lot of what I'm sharing with you harks back to the 1960s. But here are the three steps that I have found the most useful, which, in and of itself, if you could only take this model with you from this video, it's gonna help you craft good questions that will help guide your group in a conversation to extract meaning from their group. The first thing you wanna know is that there is a sequence here. Like your program, it probably develops some easier and less challenging activities and becomes more and more challenging as time goes on. It's exactly the same with your debriefing or with your reflection. And it starts like this, it's a what, then it moves into so what, and then finally into now what. So you'll clearly see that the word what is involved in all three cases. Let's look at what first of all. It's very focused on the facts. It's the what happened. It's the things that can be observed. And your primary purpose here is to get a collection of all of the knowledge that your whole group collectively understands has occurred as a result of this experience. Now, of course, if you've got a group of 12 people, you've probably got 12 different opinions, but importantly, you wanna know what happened in all cases for a whole group, because if you don't get that common information as a foundation for your conversation, it's gonna be really hard to take the next step, which is, so what? Once you've got that collection of data, you then move on to the so what stage. Now the so what stage wants to make sense. It adds meaning. It interprets that first step of what. So if in, for, you know, as an example, the what stage you identified how your group made a decision, in the so what stage, you might say, okay, so what? That's the way you made a decision. You know, you're basically talking about feelings uh, interpretations and consequences. So it might be that you discovered as one of the facts that only three people were involved in the decision-making process. 
In the so what stage, we look at, so what does that mean? Does it mean that no one else felt comfortable to share an idea? Or these were the only three ideas that we had? Or we only had time for three ideas? You tease it out. You want to learn more about the why behind those facts. That's the so what stage. Notice it's a bit more, it's a bit, it progresses the group. It's a bit more challenging for them as well. Having then teased that out, and we've understood what the consequences are, and we're maybe starting to make some conclusions about what's good, what's bad, or otherwise, you move into the final stage, recognizing this is a sequence in the now what. This is action, goal oriented. It's basically saying, well, now that you've got this information, what are you going to do with it? So it might be that the next time we make a decision, we follow this step, this step, this step. What, so what, now what? It'll be your friend. If nothing else, carry that with you. Every time you stand before a group, follow it through. Even ask those specific questions if you need to. But I have five questions that absolutely feed into those three steps that you'll find really useful to use with your groups as well. In a sense, you've already got your first three questions. You don't, but in a sense, you have three questions that can help structure your debrief. But let's look at these powerful questions that I've used and found great value with. But warning, <laughs> this is not the truth. I made it up. This is, these have all occurred as a result of what's fallen out after 35 years of experience working with groups and debriefing thousands of times, I am sure. So without being too prescriptive though, because there is a danger in thinking, oh, this is the only five questions I need to know. Again, warning, be careful with that. But it might just give you a few ideas, perhaps even tweaking these questions to make them work for you. So here we go. Question number one, what did you notice? Four words, what did you notice? I love this question because it's really focused on that very first what step. It's based on observations. What did you notice? It might be that what you noticed is different to what you noticed, but let's get that information out. And it's about what you noticed. It doesn't sound too threatening. It's just things that you've noticed. It's not a wrong or a right. It's just things that you've noticed. Let's leave it for a little bit later in the conversation as to what does all it mean? But I'm just asking at this stage, what did you notice? Try that out in no particular order, but at some point, I might make an observation, because remember, as a group facilitator, you're watching your group interact and doing whatever they need to be doing, and you're making a few notes more than likely in your mind. And if it hasn't come up in the conversation, this is my next question. I have observed X. What does this mean? What do you mean this? What do you take this to mean? So I've observed something and you describe that to the group. It might be that only three of the 10 people actually had something to say in the decision-making process. What do you make this mean? And again, you're leaving it over to the group because if I was to disempower the group, that is not to be an experiential educator and be more like a teacher where I'm just simply imparting knowledge, I would actually tell the group what I would be concluding from this. So you may have an opinion, a conclusion in your mind, but it's best if you can get your group to actually say that. So that's my second most powerful question. You know, I've observed this, what do you mean? What does that mean to you? Another question, probably related to that so what stage is, how would you describe dot, dot, dot? And it could be something like, how would you describe your process? How would you describe your communication? How would you describe your planning? where you really want to hone them in on a particular issue. It's probably related to your program goals or the whole reason that your group is coming together. But that's a really powerful question for a group to stop. And you'll notice almost their eyes roll back, thinking back and reflecting on that question. Oh, okay. Um, what words would I use to describe that? Because when you can put it in words, it's a lot easier to work with rather than just a feeling, which are legitimate. But when you've got it in words, when you can actually work with the literal sense of what's going on, it can be a lot easier to work with. This fourth question is a little bit like the second one. Where are we at? Now, I love this question for a couple of reasons. One, sometimes I'm not even sure what's going on. So I want to throw it out to the group to understand what do they think is happening. But it might also be a really great question to ask for your group when a whole lot of stuff is going on and swirling solutions and ideas and conversations and you kind of want to just pull it together. So where are we at? And in effect, you probably just want to have three or four bullet points of things that have come out of that conversation. If you end up with a list of 10 or 20 different ideas, no one is going to remember them. 
So where are we at is taking the most significant points of the conversation so that you can then carry them forward, which brings us to question number five. There are so many different versions of this, but it sounds a bit like, what will you do differently next time? This is the now what in particular. What will you do differently next time? Because if you just keep doing the same thing, you're gonna get the same result. So there has to be something different. It's around difference, articulating difference. So listen in that question for responses that actually articulate that difference. And that is where the power of that particular question comes in so handy. Okay, over to you. What are your favorite debrief questions? What have you found when you reflect back that are questions you're often asking, even if you're tweaking it a little bit, of many of the groups that you're working with? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're doing because that's one of the best ways for me to develop my skills is when I bounce ideas off with other facilitators and professionals in this space. So drop a comment below or if you've got a question, because remember, I'm just a comment away. I will 100% promise you I'll respond to every single comment. So if you've got a question or maybe you'd like to know, here's the situation, what's a question I could use? I will help you. And if it's not me, there'll be others within this community that can help you from our collective wisdom. So please um, drop a comment below and let me know if there's something that I can assist with. I'm just a comment away. Oh, and of course, if you've liked this video, you enjoyed and in, uh, resonated with the content within it, hit the like button because here's what happens. That sends a signal to YouTube, which means that they will serve it up to more group facilitators and educators and corporate trainers who could also benefit from this content. So hit the like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button as well, just below here, because that just means that you'll be notified, particularly if you hit the notification bell, when the next time we uh, release some more content. And of course, as always, I'm extremely grateful for any comments you can have below and for any liking, subscribing or notifying uh, that you choose to do. So thank you so much for watching. I'm truly grateful for your time to spend in front of this, uh, this screen. And uh, right now, I wish you all the fun out there. Mm -hmm.